suppose we had a problem we wanted to find a half of four. Now you know, you can look here, I've got four apples. Half of them, if I had a friend and we were going to share, and we were very hungry, this is all we had to eat, each of us would get two, because half of that is two. If we were sharing it equally, we'd each get two apples. So you know that the answer here is two. But let's take a look at how we could arrive at that mathematically. A half of always means multiply. And another way to write four, if I wanted to convert it to a fraction so that I could use my rules for at multiplying fraction would be to say that 4 is the same thing as 4 divided by 1. And that would equal, according to this rule, 4 times 1, which is 4, divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. Now remember that we can always look at a fraction and read it down by saying 4, the numerator, divided by 2. So what is 4? divided by 2. The top number goes inside this divide sign. The, num the denominator goes on the outside. 2 into 4 goes 2 times. 2 times 2 is 4. Subtract, you get 0. There's no remainder. So this is equal to 2. And of course, 2 could be expressed as 2 over 1, but I mean, I don't need to do that. So again, if we took a half times 4 over 1, we got 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. We multiplied the numerators and we multiplied the denominators. And then I just kind of re-expressed my answer as a whole number. So again, the, the um, process described here for multiplying fractions has been proven to work. OK, so let's look at another problem. Suppose I have 6 divided by 2. Now you know that 6 of something divided into two groups is 3 in each group, right? I've got 6 pieces of, pot of cake here. And if I'm dividing it into two groups, I've got 3 of these pieces in each group, right? 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. So 6 divided in by 2 is equal to 3. Now let's convert this to some fractions and see how we could represent that mathematically. 6 is the same thing as 6 divided by 1 because anything divided by 1 is itself. This is another way of saying 6. 2 is the same thing as saying 2 divided by 1. OK, now I want you to take a look at this and see if we write this so that we get rid of what's called a complex fraction, which is a fraction inside of a fraction. Here's a fraction, something over something else. And it's got a fraction as one of the pieces of the fraction, like the numerator and denominator are expressed as fractions. Suppose we wanted to just write this as 6 over 1, and instead of having it all divided by 2, what could we put here? And we're going to get the answer 3, which, of course, could be expressed as 3 over 1. You'll notice that 6 divided by 2 is the same thing as taking 6 and multiplying it by a half, because the process is the same. When I talk about this cake, I can say 6 divided into two even pieces, or I could think of it as 6 times a half, a half of that 6. A half of the 6 is 3, 3 of the pieces. So they kind of mean the same thing. And as you can see, 6 times 1 is 6 over 1 times 2 is 2. So this is the same thing as 6 divided by 2, which is, here we go, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. And that's no remainder, so this is 3. And another way of writing 3 is 3 over 1. So here's a way of looking at an actual problem with dividing fractions. And what we did was we took the numerator, and instead of dividing, putting a divide sign, 
So a way of writing this, another way of writing this would be 6 over 1 divided by 2 over 1. So what we did essentially to get from here to here is we put the reciprocal of 2 over 1, which is 1 over 2, and changed division to multiplication. So reciprocal means it, in multiplication, something times its reciprocal is equal to 1. I call it the upside down of the number. So I've got 2 over 1, the reciprocal is 1 over 2. If you have A over B, the reciprocal is B over C. You just flip what's on the top and on the bottom. And as you can see, when you do that, you actually, 6 divided by 2, or 6 over 1 divided by 2 over 1, is the same as 6 over 1 times 1 over 2. And so you can use this rule then for multiplying fractions and get the answer, which is 6 halves, which is 3. Suppose I have a fifth times a fourth. What would that be equal to? Well, take a look. This means a fifth of a fourth. Now let's look at our pizza, which is divided up for us. We've got our pizza divided into four sections. They're each one-fourth of the whole pizza. And a fifth of one of those fourths, one, two, three, four, five. So I actually cut this fourth into five even pieces. Each one of them is a fifth of, the f of that fourth. So how much would that one piece be of the whole pizza pie? Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There's 20 pieces that are supposed to be representing even, equal, size pizzas, pizza, size pieces of pizza. That's a tongue twister. So I have one of the 20 even pieces, which is 1 20th, right? It's 1 20th. And you can see that that is the result of multiplying the numerators and multiplying the denominators. Let's use these rules to solve this problem. 13 divided by 8 ninths. I think you'll agree that if you look at a fifth of a fourth, you might be able to kind of think what that is. Or a half of a half, which is a fourth, you can kind of picture in your head. But the reason we work with little numbers that are easy to picture and make a general rule that we find when we get those numbers is that we really need a rule that will work for numbers that are too big and complicated to just intuit in our minds what the answer is. So I think this is a good example of that. All right, so this is the same thing as 13. Remember that divided by can be written like this divided by 8 ninths. We always read down the number 13 divided by 8 ninths. All right, that's equivalent to 13 over 1, because anything divided by 1 is itself divided by 8 ninths. And if I want to write that horizontally, so I change it to a multiplication problem, well, first, <clears throat> first I'll write it horizontally and leave it as a division problem. So it would be 13 over 1 divided by 8 ninths, or 8 over 9. And this is equivalent to, this symbol means implies. And it kind of means whatever I'm writing here is the same as the other way I'm going to express it next to it. This is the same as 13 over 1 times 9 over 8. OK, so by our rule for multiplication, the answer is going to be 13 times 9 divided by 8 times 1. 8 times 1 is 8. Now I'm going to give you a little suggestion. I never do things like this in my head, because it's much easier to make arithmetic mistakes that way. I always write it out. All right, 13 times 9. 3 times 9 is 27, carry the 2. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 2 is 11. So this is equal to 117 eighths. Now, if I want to, I can express this. This, this is the answer. But I could express this in a bit 
of a simpler form by by doing the division. Again, this is 117 divided by 8. If I set up to do a division problem, which one goes on the inside here and what goes on the outside? It's always the numerator goes on the inside and the denominator goes on the outside of the symbol. Because this means 8 divided into 117, another way of saying that is 117 divided by 8, okay? So let's see, 8 into 11 is 1, subtract and I get 3, bring down the 7, and if I subtract 32 from 37 I get 5, so my remainder is 5, or I can call it 5 eighths. So the answer to this problem, the original problem we had, is 14 and 5 eighths.